Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. I, I knew something was off this morning. I knew something was off. Here it is. You know, it's crazy because, um, well, let's, let's get open for business here. And let's wake up the football gods. When you start getting to be my age, hmm, which one are you? Is that it? Or is that it? You're not working for me now? Uh-oh. A little sensor here. Oh. Let's see. Okay, wrong remote. Oh, man, maybe it did mess it up. Wow. Okay. Are we still plugged in? <laughs> we are still plugged in. Hmm. Well, maybe the lights finally died on me. Okay, well, we'll have to figure that out a little bit later. <clears throat> um... I dropped the remote yesterday. I could not find it to save my life. Um, I had it in my hand and went right on down, and I was like, where is it? And literally moved the desk and everything forward and could not find it, and this is weird. That's the sensor for it. Uh, maybe when I dropped it, I jacked up the remote. Okay. All right. So the football gods aren't going to be with us this morning. I may have to get a new light uh, set to go in there. But anyway, last night I joined um, Bad Dogs uh, live stream along with Philly 500 and Ed Oliver. We uh, actually had a really good time. I just couldn't stay real late on there. But um, definitely check it out. Uh, he got heated, of course, between me and Philly 500. It's going to be an interesting season if we definitely have one. Um, we're getting closer as we sit 88 days, 10 hours, 49 minutes, and 10 seconds away from kickoff of the 2019 season. We know that the NFL has already mentioned that it may go down to like two preseason games, and they have ways that they can shorten the season if need be, that they've kind of got every contingency plan put together um, as much as possible. And I remember as uh, we ended last season that as I was starting to look forward to this season, one of the things that I was definitely looking forward to was um, going to training camp and or going to the Hall of Fame game. Um, I know that Jimmy Johnson was going to be inducted. Um, it was going to be great because I figured we can go get the RV. We can do another road trip, you know, with the gang all together. Um, but that's looking, of course, pretty unlikely. Um Ohio's governor yesterday says it is unlikely that the Pro Football Hall of Fame ceremony August 8th and the NFL preseason game that's scheduled for the following day will take place. It will be very dangerous to do today. So, yeah, chances are that that's not going to happen because it's just not the time. Um, yeah, putting 20,000 people in a stadium together uh, still here in August while we've got cases that are beginning to go up uh, is definitely looking less and less likely. Um, the question is still is how are we having a season? You know, will we actually have fans in the stands and so on? They're still working all the details and they're basically in uncharted territory. We've never had sports as big as they are going through something like we're going right now. Um, so stay tuned and hold on to your hats. But um, it's going to be interesting because when you think about that, um, the Hall of Fame game is already literally the week after training camp opens up. Um, it used to be you would have 15 days before your first preseason game is when teams would open up. This year, because of the collective bargaining agreement, camps open up around the 28th for everybody. Some may be a day sooner, some may be a day later, but it's all right around the 28th. That does not give you much time to get ready for the Hall of Fame game, which would be the 6th of August. So that's where we stand with that. An interesting thing, and I know people have Dak Prescott fatigue and so on, 
You know, and it's not going to change anybody's mind. Anybody who likes Dak Prescott likes Dak Prescott. Anybody who doesn't like Dak Prescott just will not change. There will forever. The Cowboys could win two or three Super Bowls, and they still won't like Dak Prescott. And that's fine. You're entitled to your own opinion. But as we go through and look at this, um, you've got to look at and be hopeful that we have better coaching. If we had had just a few things, just a few, just, not major things, not major things changed on our team, a kick here, you know, maybe an a, 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 a interception that's in the hands there, you know, maybe, you know, a couple extra runs on a, a, a running play, maybe um, a, a pass that's a little bit better, maybe a, a catch that should have been made that was in the hands, just a few little things. Those things add up because you can take any game, literally, and break it down to four plays that are, are the, the reason you win or lose a game. Usually within four plays, almost any game, a mental error here, a missed block there. It's just that close between winning and losing. And sometimes even blowouts, you can point to say, those are the reason why you lost those games. If you didn't have those plays, you know, things like tripping calls on touchdowns. Tripping penalties, phantom tripping calls. You could call, go to um, a field goal kick where you get called for the snapper moving the football. Moves the ball five feet. Ends up being a missed field goal. Things that are so minor and mundane make the difference of being a 13-3 and three team and being a 7-9 and nine team. It's really that close. And things you have to realize through analytics, through studying, knowing your team, and knowing what works, is when something works, you need to use it more until they figure out how to stop it. And one of those things that I kept screaming all last season that the team used and used really, really well was play action. And when you think that to the hierarchy of the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys were bottom middle of the road at using play action. Five years ago, the Cowboys, when play action really started getting big, were doing play action about 21, 22% of the time, which was kind of higher in the hierarchy of play action. Since that time, everybody else starts using the hell out of it. The Rams got to a Super Bowl because of play action and Todd Gurley. The Cowboys... Every game that they use play action over 28% of the time, they won except for one game. For one game. And that was the Minnesota Vikings game, where Dak still had 397 yards passing, three TDs. It works. Dak Prescott, third in the NFL on touchdown passes with nine. On play action. Understand, here's the thing. Everybody's got great players in football, okay? If teams know where you're likely to go and they focus on that, chances are you're, you're going to get stopped. Play action puts that little bit of a doubt. If you've got a great back like Zeke Elliott and they're thinking you're pounding in the middle and you fake the ball to Zeke, Zeke is going there like he's running up the middle. It freezes the linebackers for just that moment. It gets that safety biting just a little bit and you pull the ball away. You get your quarterback now going outside. The linebackers are sucked in. And now they've got to stop, plant, and redirect. The safety, uh uh-oh. All of a sudden, you get Amari Cooper going down. That hesitation gives you a little bit more of lane on that double coverage. That quarterback now going outside. You got your tight end or you've got your slot receiver one-on-one with the cornerback where it's literally your defensive line is sucked in there trying to get Zeke Elliott, you now have the opportunity to either run pass option or throw it. You are literally putting a cornerback on an island. Do I stay with the receiver and let the quarterback run? Or do I go after the quarterback and leave the receiver wide open? And you do the opposite. These are things that give you an advantage. But yet, when we go and play the Eagles, for example, the second game, we use play action 
with a quarterback who has a hurt shoulder only 9% of the time. The week before against the Rams, in the 30s. Night and day difference. And when you start doing that, these are things that make it better for everybody. Because now, the linebackers say, okay, they're play actioning. Maybe I don't get sucked in with Zeke. Let me go ahead and play to run. Then you start running it. See, these are all things that part of a game planning. When you heard Jason Garrett say, you know, well, we don't do in-game analysis. Or, you know, we basically call things through the gut. These are things where analytics become important. You know, this play doesn't work too often. Because the other teams are using those analytics against you to understand what your tendencies are. And if you run on first down 75% of the time, we're going to plan on stopping you running the football. If you're on third down and always passing, you know we got to stop the pass. And these are things that are the difference between winning and losing on a regular. These are things that Bill Belichick is incredible on because he understands those analytics, what works at every down and distance, every location on the field. And this is something the Dallas Cowboys have not had for 10 years. You got a quarterback who's good on third down. You got a quarterback who is good with play action. You got to use those tools that you have because every quarterback, I don't care who they are, is going to have strengths and weaknesses. And you need to understand how to exploit the strengths and cover up the weaknesses. We just never did that. Let me give you one more example. Everybody knows Brandon Wheaton could not throw to his left. He just couldn't. He just didn't have the arm strength. Yet, when we had Brandon Whedon as a quarterback, we were still trying to run the offense like Tony Romo was there. And every time they went and tried to throw to the left, it's just like, it's going to get picked off. It's going to get picked off. And damn if it did. Over and over again. And that's where you looked at what the Cowboys were doing with Jason Garrett, it was the definition of insanity. We kept doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. You must change and evolve in life, in football, in everything, because the theory of evolution, when you don't adapt to changes, you will die. How should it be any different in football? All right, gang. I got work to do. I got to figure out what the hell's wrong with my lights. I I don't like not having my lights. That's not not a good thing. And, um, yeah, I got to figure out what's going on with my lights. But as always, guys, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. I'll see you soon.